Hello, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, uh, after a couple of missions, I was left with 31.3 science, so I'm definitely going to go in there and spend that. But before I do, uh, I'm out of contracts, so I think what I want to do is pick up a couple of contracts, and then we'll unlock nodes based on that. Oh, I could... Upgrade mission control. This is usually my first target to upgrade because then you can go up to seven contracts and then bringing in those contracts You know is a is a quick little cash inflow right there from the advances that you get from the contracts, but uh, It's 112.5 112 Oh my god 112,500 bucks and I'm at 119. Uh, it's a little too tight. So maybe a couple more contracts first. So let's take a look at what we got. Um, let's see here. I've looked at those, looked at those. A lot of part testing contracts. Orbit Kerbin. Uh, the advance is only 9,000. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm quite ready there. And actually, I could probably build a rocket that could orbit Kerbin. My issue is actually control my only means of controlling my rockets attitude control that is is aerodynamic control surfaces i don't have reaction wheels i don't have vectoring engines that i don't have uh any kind of rcs system but perhaps if i take a look and see if i can unlock one of those because that's the issue once i'm out of the atmosphere i'll have no attitude control on my rocket with the tech i have right now but Perhaps, so let's see what we got for part testing. You know, if I unlock the right things. Test the Spacely liquid fuel engine in flight over Kerbin. Now, that's interesting because the Spacely is a 0.625 meter liquid fueled engine, but with gimbling. So that would give me some attitude control in space. That is a consideration. All right, let's see what tech I have available, and then that'll help me make a decision now. So, over here for 16, so I got 16, and these are 45, so I'm definitely going to be looking at, or, or sorry, they're 18, so I can only order one. This is the Spacely engine I was talking about, and it does have, I'm pretty sure, yes, has some vector gimbling on there. This also gives me a flea and the ants and the spiders, so lots of little engines. And I do have liquid fuel tanks of a variety of sizes. Those I don't think I'm interested in. Aerodynamics, yeah, I think. Oh, this still has to be researched to get the stack decouplers. Aerodynamics, the only thing I'd be interested in really, well, the hard ports might be good too. But really, I'd, I'd like to get the the um i can get it early aviation is what it's called i was saying aerodynamics but getting the fairing thank you there's we go <laughs> stability what is this this is an rcs port i do have i think some small rcs tanks that came with this yes so there that's something to think about command share and a probo dobodyne cube which i still don't think has it gives me some SAS capabilities, but it does not have reaction wheels in it. So since reaction wheels are still a ways away. And then down here. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Goo and solar panels. But goo. <laughs> goo, 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 goo. For science. Is that. Just to get the goo containers. That's going to take nine days. I have 13 left over. I don't think... There's some ones. This is a one -er, but I don't think it's worth it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take the SETI contract to get into orbit. And we're going to see if we can go for that one. And under part testing, because this will give me the space lacy, I'm thinking ahead. Testing the space lacy in a flight over Kerbin there and now I get the space key without unlocking that upper tier node now in our construction we have a mallet sounding rocket oh yes so that's a day and a half away build something simple for that and 
the space plane hangar, we have the Juno in storage, so we can definitely get into that, but I should get something into our second service bay. Basic construction, which will give me the liquid fuel tanks I need, is still seven days away. So, in the meantime, so i got to wait seven days to build, I think, a decent little rocket. Let's see what we got. I want to get into some KOS as well. I, I wrote a new little KOS script that I do want to show people. But what I think I'm going to do is see if we can get us some high altitude telemetry science. Uh, that is kind of what I'm interested in. So I'm going to start with this. Do I have parachutes finally? I finally do have parachutes. But I do not have stack decouplers. Shoot in the shoot shoot. And the reason why I'm mounting... I'm mounting these parachutes so low is I don't want this thing to land on its end. I would like it to kind of land on its side. So of course if they land on the end they tend to fall over. We'll try it, we'll see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? Well lots of things can happen obviously. Lots of worse things can happen. Okay this is a... okay I'm gonna rename this. This is a striker uh, M3 for the mallets. That's what I'm going to call it. This is a Striker M3. MR3. That's a better name. So Mallet Radio 3. There we go. Let's give this a go. And actually, what I'll also give a go is my new script. Uh, it's a bit of a modification of the script you saw a couple of episodes ago that uh, went suborbital. This one is designed for ballistic trajectories. And it's gonna take a couple of parameters. That's the thing that's a little bit different. So let's open this up, I'll show how it works, and then again later in the episode, I'll go over the code in more detail. So right now though, we're just gonna open up the terminal. We're gonna run this from the archive, so we're just gonna switch to zero. And it's called ballistic, so run ballistic. And it takes two parameters. One is a heading, so I can have it go off in different headings. Uh, I'm gonna go with 270, which is due west. So we're gonna go back over the grasslands and the mountains and stuff. And the other one is a pitch setting. Um, I'm gonna go with 40 degrees. And what it's gonna do is it aims to hit that pitch when it gets to an altitude of uh, 10 kilometers it won't quite get there but that's we'll see how it works so again i've never tested this on this rocket because clearly i just built this thing so we'll see how this goes we're getting our normal countdown and we're off and we'll see how this goes it should start pitching west once yep there it goes it's pitching westward and uh of course i would be so oh there's something else i want to do Remind me, I finally figured out how to change the uh, configuration of these pods and probes. Remind me to get back to that in the VAB as soon as I'm done with this. And what I want to show you is, it goes, do, 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 where is configure unmanned experiments. So here we go. So what you get is a number of uh, slots. This one only has one slot. This slot shows up here. And what I can do, I right now have it as set as a telemetry port, but one of the nodes that I, uh, science nodes that I got did upgrade this. I can now do the two hot thermometer from inside here. Unfortunately, if I do that, then I can't do other things. So I do want still a two hot thermometer. So if I wanted to just do temperature, I don't need to have the thermometer on here. I could do the Geiger counter from here. Again, from the probe body rather than worrying about anything else. I can do this new experiment called LIGHT, uh, which is a luminosity information technical experiment. Literally is just is it in the what? Oh, literally is just is it in the sun or not. That's all it's doing. Um, this is only for space though. So the situation is only for space, so that's not going to do us much good. And then I could put have it do nothing. So I'm going to put it back as unexciting as that is to the telemetry report because that is pretty much the only thing we got. But I think I'm pretty happy with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this into, close this, I'm going to push this into the building queue. We'll save it. Actually, one thing somebody was mentioning is 
you can pre-start these. I'm gonna try this. Pre-starting these before, and this one too, pre-start the telemetry report. And then they you don't have to, it, they'll go automatically apparently. See how it goes. Anyway, I'm gonna save that. We're gonna add that to our plans. And we're gonna push that into our building queue. And I do want to try and build something that will go into orbit, but the I want to first off get some stack decouplers. I think that's kind of holding me back right now. Uh, we are doing the Striker MR3. Boom. And the Striker MR3 is going to take 12 days to build. We got a day on the mallet. Space plane hangar I don't need. I'm pretty happy with this stuff, I think, because I do believe I have some upgrade points. Let's go into the VAB. Second bay on the VAB. Now both bays have equal build times. Yeah, that's good stuff. Okay. Close that off. All right, let's get into our space plane hangar, and we will launch this. And you know what? Oh, Bill... Uh, no, we're going to take Bill out. We want a pilot, obviously. Uh, Bill and Bob. Oh, it's starting to do. Okay. 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 <laughs> so why is this happening? Why do I only have Bill and Bob? I am pretty sure this is a mod called R&R, &R, um, which requires your Kerbals to have some rest. <laughs> and towards the end of last episode, Valentina flew the Juno. Jeb had a harrowing... Well, really not that harrowing, actually. Experience being our first Kerbal getting over 18 kilometers in our rocket plane last episode. I guess both of these are going to fly just as crappily. So let's go with Bob because he does get a bit of a science bonus and that's what this is going to go. Uh, we'll fill the tanks and launch and we'll see how this goes. Hopefully Bob won't be too embarrassing. So the difference, of course, is going to be I, I don't have SAS available. Oh, we'll see how it goes. Ish, Bob should be. Ish, I, uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Maybe this isn't that smart. Maybe I should just wait for Val to rest up. All right. We're here. Bob can put the brakes on, right? There we go. All right, Bob. Um. Now. Good. These are empty now. Excellent. And these should be full. Excellent. So that's working as I hoped. We have to do, we have to do, we have to do, actually the only science we have yet to do on this is a pressure scan. So we're going to do a pressure scan, we'll start that up. Let's go for the water first. Uh, I think that's our safest path so that if worst comes to worst, hopefully Bob can do a ditch in the water without embarrassing himself too much. And I'm hoping this thing won't be so bad without SAS. I never flew it without SAS. So we're going to find... I sure as heck do not want to lose Bob at such an early... Okay, there we go. So we have no thought, We have no data because everything that was crap. But what we want to do... This is all right. What we want to do is get ourselves over the water and we should be starting to do a temperature scan once we are over the water. There it is, flying over the water, and that's going to get us 5.7 science. So we'll do a little time warping. Time warping without... Uh, you know what, I'm just going to go two times. And I won't subject you to how long this is going to take. Suffice it to say that Bomb actually had little trouble. Circling seemingly endlessly <laughs> over the water, the grasslands, the mountains, and the highlands to collect the science does turn out, by the way, that Bob does not get a science bonus because he's only level zero. Uh, you don't get the science bonus until level one. And, of course, to get to level one, you need to get into orbit. And, well, I, yeah, I, I have no idea when that's going to happen. No promises on a time frame for uh, getting my first Kerbal into orbit. And by the time Bob did get back, we were treated to a nice sunset. And you know what? I'm telling you. If I were Val or Jeb, well, I'd be getting a little bit nervous for the safety of my job. Oh man, Jeb, Val, eat your heart out. 
And although that went fine, I bet you it probably wasn't very smart. I should have just <laughs> let Val or Jeb rest up. Would have been fine. Anyway, we're going to recover this uh, because I want to do into the space plane hangar. And we're going to do some modifications. So we can no longer do... Remember, this thing, by the way, is right at its park count limit, too. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All of these science things are now done. There is nowhere this thing can reach <clears throat> with that science equipment. And I think I, until I've locked the goo, that's the end of that. But what I want to do, and I was thinking probably back, if I take that cone off, I want to stick a stake putnik on the back here. So we can sort of tuck it in. I think in the back would be the best place for it. And we'll just see if I slide that in just a little bit. I don't think that looks terrible. No, no, I'm happy with that. I have, in the meantime, another science node I can unlock. Honestly, this would be the most logical one, wouldn't it? I mean, I know I got the Spacely, but I think I, I'm going to go with unlocking this one for real. All right. Back out to here. You know what I should do? Let's get back in there. Just for the build point. <laughs> one science for one build point, and it gives me the 1.25 meter structural tubes. Oh, I think that's right. So now I have two build points. Put those to work for us. Uh, VAB is working all right. Space plane hangar is fine. I'm not going there anytime soon. Let's actually put one, yes, one into the VAB. VAB, uh, we will add again another build point to our one of our bays. And in research and development, let's get researching that tech quicker. Tech. Nice. Okay. Goody, good, good. How much is this mission control? 112? That would leave me with 11,000, but I could pick up more contracts. Yeah, let's do that. So let's upgrade mission control. That ate up a lot of my money, but right away, we can get into here and grab some more. Let's see here. We could test the spider in a suborbital trajectory. Oh shoot, of course. I'm getting too excited. Because, <laughs> of course, Kerbal Construction Time, it's going to take... Where is it? Oh, here we are. Okay, almost nine days. Okay, well, what else is coming up? So, structures medium. That will give me structural tubes, I think. Oh, I know what I wanted to look at, too. Um, is if I go into the astronaut complex and look up Jeb he's ready in six days Jeb Valentina's got to wait six days too Bob's got to wait six days easy jeez, jeez, jeez. you guys get vacations like nothing okay uh, what's next oh my mallet sounding rocket fine I don't need any of you guys for my mallet and you know what I think I'm gonna do I'm going to see if I can build something to go into orbit. Come on, where's my water data? Where's my water data? Actually, I should splash down, and I should be able to splash down softly, too. Given how this thing flew before, so we should be able to recover it. Where is my water data? There we go. Water data now. Hopefully we can get the rest of this before we are on the ground and then we'll get some telemetry data splash down as long as I don't crash. Okay. I 
should be good. Okay, pitch up. And we survived that. Excelente. And we are now collecting telemetry data. It's just going to take another 18 seconds. This is for a splash down in the water. This might be the last flight of the mallet. I think it has accomplished everything it can, but good job, little mallet. But right now, I think we need to get into the VAB and see if we can not build ourselves something that can get into space. That is my goal. Not just space, I mean an orbit. <laughs> Proper space. Proper space. We're going to start with the they put Nick, of course, and this time we're going to change its configuration. Where is that? Configure unmanned experiments, and we're going to put this onto the light because that can be done in low space. That will be our first exposure to that. Excellent. Now we need to build ourselves a little orbiter, and the only engine I got. Hang on, do I not have, I have a contract to test the Spacely, but I ain't got no Spacely, where's my Spacely? This is not going to do it for me because that doesn't have any gimbling. I need my Spacely. Okay, I don't understand. Okay, let's, let's get out into, no, don't save you. Let's get out to, oh! Could it be somehow mission control upgrading has botched this? Is it possible? See, I got this spacely, but somehow that this is mission control is upgrade. That wouldn't seem very fair, but maybe somehow mission control upgrading means that I don't have my spacely do not have my spacely which means I have no ability to affect my attitude once I'm outside of the atmosphere which really is gonna make this I think pretty much impossible so does that mean I gotta wait seven days it does mean I gotta wait seven days well what I can do in the meantime I don't know if that's a feature or a bug <laughs> but either way it's rather annoying we're going to go back into here just to take advantage of the fact that we do have a second bay we're going to put another striker m3 we'll go with this i gotta watch my money because i'm really tight for money now so i don't want to build anything that's too expensive in fact, it might have been foolish just to even do that. Okay, what do we got next? Basic construction's coming up. Warp past that. Oh, that is so annoying. So I'm going to get my Spacely when General Rocketry is, is done. So now I'm going to get my Spacely. Don't need you, Mission Control. Okay, and then we're going to get General Rocketry. That gets us a Spacely. i got to build me something that can get me into orbit. But I haven't got much money. Let's build something really small, a tiny itsy bitsy orbiter. I do have an Oscar B. Oh no, I oh my gosh. I don't have the money for parts. Okay, okay. Well, I, get, I, I, I can't afford the Oscar B. I have spent money on an Oscar C. And of course, the Spacely. I ain't gonna make this. Okay, we gotta find a way to get some money. Well, as soon as... Ah! As soon as Mission Control is updated, I can get a bunch more contracts that will get me money. Maybe that's the best plan. <laughs> oh, dear. I thought I had this so covered up. Oh, uh, yeah. So, we're gonna build a Juno. Valentina's gonna finish off the rest of these telemetry reports. We should get low telemetry over mountains. 
and highlands and deserts. I don't think there's much science in it, but we'll see what we get. At least these are pretty quick. Pretty quick and easy. It only takes, I think, 30 seconds for one of these telemetry reports, so that's nice. Val, you're doing it like the veteran that you are. Boom. Alright. Okay, we got a day for mission control. We also have a day for that striker MR3. We'll do that. Bit of a pain, but it's all working out, I think. So this should give us mission control right there. Updated. Now can we take a closer look at our updated mission control here? Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> well, really not that exciting. But I can now get a lot of new contracts. And that will update my cash flow. I can build me a good rocket. And I'm not going to go in detail over these right now. We'll be running into them in future episodes, absolutely no doubt. But my emphasis was just on the advancements. <laughs> I wanted those cash advancements. I needed to improve my cash flow. Uh, these are all part testing contracts. I obviously picked ones that I felt were reasonably achievable. I did emphasize on getting the two-star, the significant contracts uh, got as many of those as I could which is five and then filled that in with a couple of two-star contracts and in the end ended up with 54,229 curb bucks that should be enough for me to finally get this silly orbiter built all right for the third time <laughs> grabbing this they put Nick we are configuring this so it will do the light experiment Great. Let's get started on this orbiter now. Now I can afford the Oscar B and the Spacely engine. The Oscar B being the smallest fuel can I have available, I think, as it is in the stock game. And the Spacely engine, of course, with its vector gimbling to allow me to control my attitude. And then I wanted to science this thing up. Uh, one funny thing, there's no sense putting a barometer on this thing. That's thanks to Kerbalism. Kerbalism has removed the ability to take pressure scans in space in a vacuum and come on let's face it that's that was always a bit silly taking those pressure scans in a vacuum so no barometer but i do have the goo container for the first time so definitely slap that on as far as transmissions go i went with the communitron 8 instead of the 16S that I've been using so far in these missions. The Communitron 8 being deployable is basically a smaller version of the Communitron 16. It has less bandwidth, but it also has less mass and it's cheaper. So that's why I went with the 8. And bandwidth I don't really care about because this thing's gonna stay in orbit. And with Kerbalism, science can be collected even when this is not the active vehicle yes science will be collected in the background while this thing is orbiting so i don't care about bandwidth we're gonna go lighter and cheap as we can go got oxstat solar panels for the first time too we'll put on four of those but you know with all of that done i think this thing is ready for the testing now i'm going to talk a little bit about something i haven't done yet with the simulator the crash simulator that comes with this game and that is you are able to simulate uh into orbit you don't have to start on the launch pad or on the runway you can start actually in orbit provided it's a body that you have previously visited. We have visited Kerbin, obviously. <laughs> so we can do uh, do a simulation in orbit about Kerbin. And that, of course, is gonna save me a lot of money when it comes to the time it takes to do this simulation, because all I don't need to do the whole simulation to get this thing up there. I just wanna know that it works. So let's push the big green button. Here we are. In orbit by cheating <laughs> so um let's get ourselves into sucks that we're on the day side or night side 
We can... Electricity should be fine. All right, uh, I'd have no SAS, but what I want to do, let's turn the thrust way down on this guy and see if I can not spin us around prograde. That's my goal. So I'm going to give us a splash of thrust. Turn and thrust. Engine needs to be engaged. <laughs> uh, activate engine. Okay. So yaw and just a smidge of thrust. Ooh, that looks nice. Okay, we are spinning. I think this is going to work. I do have persistent rotation installed, so I should, if I time warp, yeah, it still keeps spinning. I like persistent rotation. Okay. Those engine uh, thrust things. So once I get on the prograde vector, we're going to give ourselves some thrust and get control here. Uh, what? Okay, whoa, 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 I have... Feels like, what is going on? Give myself more. I'm going around this... Am I just spinning it the wrong way? Am I just an idiot? Okay. Why am I not... Oh, this is why the simulations are good. It feels like... Yeah. But it feels like... I, I mean, I did point it at one point. Why is it not... Okay. Let's again give ourselves a little bit of thrust. Activate the engine. Let's pitch up this time. That's up. That's your impersonation of up. Okay, so I'm not going to do anything crazy this time. Let's just start the engine. We're going to go a little bit of thrust and see if we can not fly a straight line. That's it. No. Oh, you know what it is? Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Terminate simulation. Of course, I don't have the center mass, center thrust. Ah, because I got the mass, the goo, and, you know, everything. That's the issue, you bonehead. Well, I was able to sort that out eventually. <laughs> I slid the engine over just a little bit until we got the thrust and the mass to line up. And then I ended up, of course, building the booster to get this thing into orbit. And you know what? I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it because it's not going to launch this episode. You'll see it next episode for sure. Uh, one thing that did come out of it, though, that was... I don't know. I haven't had to do this for a while. I'm so used to KSP of building this, this big booster, maybe a few radial SRBs on it, and I can get pretty much anything into orbit. But with... You know, I don't have the most powerful of engines with this thing. I had to build a multi-stage rocket. I can't even think the last time I had to build something like this. It actually has an upper atmosphere stage. But, uh, so that was kind of refreshing. But then, well, I ended up running into a bigger problem. Okay, let's, let's give her a go. Simulate. We're going to simulate. From the lot. Oh, well, oh, my park count is way over. Shoot. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I gotta lose 21 parts. Alright, let's start with the easy stuff. And yeah, the parts started coming off. And believe it or not, I did get this down under 30 parts. Actually, not under 30, right at 30 parts, I'll be completely honest. But oh my goodness, do I have to upgrade the VAB? That's got to be my next priority, and hopefully 
uh, those mountain of part testing contracts so help me make some money so I can do that. It's interesting to note that I'm nowhere near the mass restrictions that are on the launch pad. It's the part count that's killing me here. And I think I'm going to leave the reveal of this vessel, the final result of this, for next episode. It, I did end up flying it and I did fly it successfully so it did go into the building queue and you will be seeing it next episode for sure. But I want to finish off this episode by taking a look at KOS. And I'll start with the changes that I've made to this script since the last time you saw it. So here, here we go. Okay, so the beginning of this is just a little bit, is very much the same as, oh, I added this line that we are taking parameters now, a heading and a pitch. This is a comment, so it's completely unnecessary. And a description, this thing, uh, well, we, we, you already saw it at work. Um, I also, there's a restriction, of course, on the heading. There's no kind of test. If you put in something stupid for pitch or something stupid for heading, um, this thing will have problems. <laughs> it doesn't correct for that. So as far as declaring parameters, really easy. You use the word declare, word parameter, and then I have two parameters. One is my desired heading and the other is my desired pitch. So now the program uh, KOS knows that this particular program to run requires some parameters and it's expecting you to provide that information. Uh, the first bit of information you provide in the bracket will go in for the heading and the second one will go in for the pitch. It's simply the order in which they appear here. And then we have some additional calculations that are being done here. So this we started before the start uh, pitch starting altitude. When is it going to start pitching over? I'm having it, I reduced it a little bit from the last program. It's now going to start pitching at 250 meters. A roll correction. This is again um, because of the orientation this thing comes out of the VAB. I want to maintain that orientation. I don't want it to roll at all. So for that I require a roll correction. And no matter what your heading is, if you want to maintain the, the way it comes out of the VAB, uh, provided you hadn't rotated it in the VAB, my roll correction is going to be 360 degrees minus my desired heading. That's it. That's all that does. So we're going to set roll correction to that. Uh, then we're going to lock. And this is uh, calculating for me. I need to keep track of it is the angle that the surface prograde vector makes with the horizon, which I am going to call the declination. I hate probably not the right word. <laughs> I really don't care, but that's what this is calculating here. There isn't a um, structure built within KOS to provide that information, so I have to calculate it. And it is the arc sign, the inverse sign of the vertical speed. I can get the, ver the amount of vertical surface speed and divided by the magnitude of the surface prograde vector, my, v my uh, velocity uh, relative to the surface, the magnitude of that, and if you can picture that triangle, you know, vertical is, it's opposite over hypotenuse, sine, inverse sine of that gets me what that angle is from the horizon. Uh, why this little plus one, or uh, plus point one here and minus point one there? I started running into uh, not a number errors, for those people not doing a lot of coding out there, that means that it ran into a calculation it can't perform and can't figure out what that number is because it's mathematically invalid. So it throws an error called not a number. It's NAN is what it puts out. And there's two reasons that could happen in this particular calculation. One is if the surface velocity magnitude happened to be zero, which it is right at the very, very beginning when it's sitting on the pad. Um, and then you're dividing by zero here and that's gonna be not a number. The other possibility that I also ran into is if the this dividing comes out to be a number more than one, then you can't take the arc sign of it. In other words, if the vertical speed turned out to be more than what the magnitude of the surface velocity was, now you might be correctly surmising that's impossible. Less surface, you know, by the magnitude of the surface velocity, that has to be the bigger of the two numbers, and you are completely correct. But while this thing is vertical, those two numbers are very close to each other, and I think rounding errors just had it go up over one. All that has to happen is once during the whole calculation. 
uh, during the whole run of the program and then it's going to throw not a number so to make sure that that never happens i added a 0.1 on the bottom so this will never be zero and i subtracted 0.1 a small amount of number from the top yes it throws the angle off teeny bit but you'll never notice it and it brute force way of preventing those not a number errors by the way the difference between set and lock you might be noticing those set sets a value to this variable just once once it runs into this line sets that value and then it leaves that value alone lock means that over the run of this program this declination will continue to be calculated and it'll be locked to this calculation so as the vertical speed and the magnitude of the surface velocity changes this declination will change over time I'm pretty sure that's the difference between set and lock I'm pretty sure if I put set here it'll calculate declination once and then not keep calculating over the run of the program which clearly I don't want to do next calculation lock V pitch so this is vertical pitch to 90 minus um, this is the vector angle of the up and the facing forward vector okay what is this doing this is actually calculating the pitch of the vessel for me how it is pointed relative to the rise and how many degrees is it over the horizon again not something that it by default gives you you have to calculate it it's doing some vector arithmetic thankfully the function for that called v angle its vector angle is um already a function pre-made i don't you don't have to understand how it works but there is a this is the up component of the forward vector and this is the facing component in other words the component that's facing in the same direction as the rocket of the forward vector and it's calculating the angle between them subtracting them from 90 that's my pitch that's it okay then it's going to set my pitch this is the pitch i want and this is a calculation I don't th this is my own brute force calculation that I've done basically as the altitude increases I want the pitch to come down and you know what I'll spend another time I'll talk a bit more about this calculation but it works for me <laughs> it takes the pitch I want to get to the altitude of the rocket and calculates where I want the pitch right now that's all it is the rest of this is actually quite a bit more straightforward uh, we got the countdown just like before that actually is all exactly the same down here at the bottom we are going to be doing our pitching maneuver that is a little bit different so we're waiting again until our altitude gets to our starting altitude for pitching we're starting our pitching maneuver um, I put in here it's going to continue with this pitching maneuver until the absolute value of the pitch I want my desired pitch and its actual pitch is less than five so when it gets to my desired pitch within five degrees it's going to come out of this little loop this is a loop here the curly brace here starts the loop and this is the end of the loop there's only one line in the loop and that is to lock the steering to the heading of my desired heading the direction I want to go and whatever the pitch calculation is throwing out plus my roll collect correction so it won't roll the vessel uh, that will continue on until the pitch is within five degrees of what I want and then finally it does this is actually very much the same as what it was in the previous program uh, it's gonna lock it to prograde and that lasts for only about five seconds and then the program ends and I put in this line that when the program ends it disengaged that prograde lock the prograde lock is gonna be gone and this thing will just be going ballistic after that and so there we go that is the whole program we'll exit that and uh, yeah we are ready to run I think there's nothing much to this so we're going to run yep ballistic we're gonna go westward 270 degrees I found that pitch of 40 worked pretty good you know what let's go 35 life on the edge change things from the simulation period I do want to start my experiments before this gets going and actually let's see what do we got we have they stay put Nick it will be doing a telemetry it is already waiting oh that's right we queued these up in the VAB we have a radiation scan we have the press map barometer and we have a thermometer all of these won't do much of anything 
until they are in the upper atmosphere above 18 kilometers. But we'll get them all queued and ready to go. All of our flights going to be handled by our ballistic program. Staging is going to be handled by smart parts. So really, all I got to do at this point, my RCS is on for some reason, <laughs> even though that wouldn't be doing anything. All I got to do now is actually start this puppy up. Actually, let's get the, sorry, let's get our datum window up here so we can watch what's going on. Put that there. All right, now we're ready to go. So go. off and we're gonna watch well our science experiments aren't gonna do much of anything and we are pitching over yeah I'll talk about that formula I have it gives a nice gentle pitch over maneuver that I really like I developed it's a modification of one I had for my previous launch script I just, I don't know. This is getting long enough, I don't want to get into it. There we go, there go our boosters, parachutes are deploying, so those should be recovered. We are still pitching over nicely. Again, no science yet, because there's nothing to gain until we get into the upper atmosphere. And yes, my X1 debris, I'm going to finally recover that. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. I keep forgetting to recover it. Alright, and as we get around 40 degrees pitch, this thing should be ending our program. Oh, correction, ran out of fuel before that. Of course, the program doesn't know how much fuel we got. <laughs> so, oh, there we go, locking the prograde for whatever it's worth. And our program has ended, lock is disengaged, we are going ballistic from here on in. Now... We should be collecting science. We are, and at the top of our at the top of our path here, when we reach our apoapsis, we're going to be deploying the parachutes and trying to maximize the amount of time we spend in the upper atmosphere, because that is the only science we are getting. And that is going to be happening. Oh, shoot, I forgot to. Okay, I got to fix the parachutes. Deploy the, I, f I meant to do this in the VAB, and I completely forgot these parachutes. Maximize this altitude. Actually, that part really doesn't matter, but minimize that pressure. Uh, it's pretty minimal as it is. And same with you. Minimize that pressure maximize that meant to do that in the VAB I forgot so we are collecting data may oh there they go good 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 what I really need are high altitude um, drone doogies now are all of these worth something they are they are all worth stuff yeah so let that go and once we are below 18 kilometers I believe there's no oh we ran out of storage that's actually okay that's understandable I'd like to transmit as much as I can if this as long as the stay putnik doesn't blow up doesn't help that I'm going stay putnik first does it I should have really rethought <laughs> the placement of those parachutes but we're going down nice and slowly might be landing on a mountainside. <laughs> all right. And I think we're going to get that all off. Thank goodness for parachutes. But it still would be nice to recover this thing. At least get some bits and bobs. Oh, what happened with our messages here? That's my vessel complete messages, but this should be for stage recovery. So there we go. These are for our uh, three boosters. We're recovering 98% of the value of the booster that's great I assume without the fuel in it so there we go excellent we have transmitted all we have to transmit we got money back for those boosters thanks to the parachutes that were on them and we have 19.9 science you know what that means that means another node all that's left to do is to see whether this thing is gonna survive 
Oh, oh, I saw a bend. <laughs> I think it was all right. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So we can re Oh, it's starting to slide. Just recover it before it starts to, to bog it down the hill. All right, that worked out all right. Okay, so point 0.8. Well, uh, yeah, that's just for recovery of the vessel. We now have 20.7 science. Slowly building up. You know what else I'm going to be doing is all those testing contracts. I got to start banging some of those off. Get some cash flow happening again. I really do need to upgrade that vehicle assembly building. But you know, all of that, including my attempt to put something into orbit, is going to all be for next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.